What is going on, shrimp keepers? This is Rob with FlipAquatics.com, and today I want to talk to you about those picky fish or new fry that you just had born in your tank that you just can't get to eat anything. So we deal with this a lot here at Flip Aquatics. We have over 150 nano fish specific tanks, and we get in some picky eaters that we have to feed some specific foods. And that's where today I want to talk to you about Daphnia. So some of you may be wondering, what are Daphnia? If you've never heard of Daphnia, I'm gonna give you a quick summary of what they look like and what you can expect if you wanna keep them at your house to feed to your fish. So first of all, they're pretty small. The smallest ones are about the size of a, probably a pen point, whereas the biggest ones are about the size of a BB. So depending on how long you breed them for and how big your colony is, you can have a diverse amount of sizes of Daphnia to feed to all different sizes of fish. Another important thing to point out about Daphnia is that they are filter feeders. That means that they are actually going to filter the water and feed through the water column. So it's important to feed them where they're eating and that's in the water column. So things like powder food, and we'll get to this later on in the video, but green water is a huge food source for them. And we'll show you guys exactly what we do for feeding later on in this video. Just got some Daphnia, let's go feed some fish. All right, so we have our Daphnia and I decided to feed them to our gold rams. And the reason for that is we actually got some big Daphnia. So I wanna make sure we put it in a tank that the fish are actually gonna eat it. And so one cool thing about Daphnia, if you do have two bigger ones and you put them in a tank where they won't eat it, um, Daphnia live in fresh water. So they're still gonna do good in fresh water. They're not gonna die and pollute the tank like brine shrimp would or other other creatures would, other livestock or live foods. So let's actually go ahead and feed these. So if you actually want to take the next step and actually culture Daphnia at home, the first thing that I want to start with is tank size. And the bigger is always better when it comes to this because more water volume means more Daphnia, also means less problems. So this is our main breeding colony. We actually have three colonies all together. And this one is about 110 gallons. Now we don't have this completely filled up. And the reason for that is as the population grows, we actually add water. So when we started this colony, we had about six inches of water in here. I would say about 20 gallons. And we do that because we want the maximum amount of surface area. And we also want the least amount of water so that the Daphnia can find each other easily and start breeding. As the population increases, we actually increase the water volume. So currently we probably have about 100 gallons in here, maybe 90 gallons, and it's still not maxed out. So once it gets to the big point of like, we have tons of Daphnia in here, we will have this fully filled up and Daphnia everywhere. So two of our three colonies are actually in very small containers. I would say these containers are about 24 inches long, about 12 inches wide and about four inches deep. So we're only using about two inches of water here, which means I would guess maybe three, four gallons total in these tanks. And these are actually breeding really good. Now, the reason we have three colonies going is because sometimes colonies crash. So we always wanna have extra eggs in different baskets just in case something goes wrong. And so that's why we keep three different colonies and three different tanks to limit our chances of a colony crash. So the really unique thing about Daphne is we actually do not filter the water. All we do for filtration is a simple airline with some bubbles coming out, usually about a bubble every second, maybe a little bit more and maybe a little bit less. And the reason we don't use filtration is Daphnia are suspended in the water column. They're constantly swimming around. They're not very strong. So they're used to really slow moving pools, edges of ponds, things like that. So if you have a power filter in there, a sponge filter, it can actually suck the Daphnia into it, which could create deaths, which could lead to uh, water quality issues. So 
For us, it's just easier not to use a filter. And at the end of the day, to have you don't produce a lot of waste. So you really don't need a filter. You just have to stay on top of your water changes, which we're getting into right now. So as we talked about before, we are not filtering our Daphnia cultures. That means water changes are one of the most essential parts of keeping Daphnia. We do our water changes once a week. We usually about 10 to 15% of a water change. And the most important thing to know here is using aged water. So we actually age our water for at least 24 hours to ensure that, you know, gases have been bled off. Um, we can treat for, you know, toxins in the water like ammonia, chloramine. And so we age our water to ensure that it's as safe as possible for our daphnia. Now, when actually performing the water change, you're gonna need your super simple siphon hose to get the organics off the bottom in a five gallon bucket. Now, some people say to leave the organics in the bottom because it contains Daphne eggs, but at the end of the day, the risk is not worth the reward for us. Those organics on the bottom can also lead to nitrate spikes, which could kill a whole colony. So we're always on top of getting the organics out to make the best colony possible and ensure that it lives the longest. So what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna take our siphon hose, we're gonna siphon out as much organics as possible into a five gallon bucket. And the reason it's important to use a five gallon bucket is because it's nice and tall. So what's gonna happen is you are going to catch Daphne, you are going to suck them up. So it's important to use a five gallon bucket, let the water settle for about two hours after you drain it out. The organics will go to the bottom of the, the bucket and the Daphne will float to the top and they'll start swimming around. So from there, you just take a net, scoop them out, and you can either feed those Daphnia or put them back in the main colony. So one important thing that we've found with Daphnia and success is having a light on their tank 24 hours a day. Now, the reason for that is when the lights go out, Daphnia go to sleep like all of us. They kind of rest on the bottom. And when that happens, if there's algae on the bottom, um, they're actually going to get caught in that algae and die. And so we were having a lot of issues with only running the lights 12 hours a day versus 24 hours a day. So we actually bumped up our light schedule to never turn it off 24 seven. And what we found is Daphne are constantly eating, they're constantly breeding, and we never have that issue of them getting caught in, uh, you know, the leftover algae on the bottom or things that are going wrong. And so we found that our production went through the roof. All right, so one of the most important things is how to feed your Daphnia. We talked about their filter feeders. So there's a couple things you're going to need. We use a few products here. The first thing is active dry yeast. Now this you can get any brand. The brand really doesn't matter. We use Red Star. And so you need that yeast. And then the second thing, which you don't necessarily have to have, but we like to use it. It's 100% organic spirulina powder. We do a 50-50 mix, and that's what we use to feed the Daphnia in the water column. Now, when it actually comes to feeding them, what we do is we use about one tablespoon and we mix it into pure RO water, get it real mixed. We actually use a blender for that. And then we add it to the aquarium to the point where it actually clouds the water. Now, we don't feed again until that tank is clear because again, Daphnia are filter feeders. So their whole job is to clean the water. So if there's cloudy water, they have something to eat. If you don't have cloudy water, then they're hungry. So that's what we use. So sometimes it might take a day until the water's clear. It might take two days, three days. It just depends on our Daphnia population. But whenever that water's clear, that's when we feed and we feed just enough to actually cloud the water. So we'll do some B-roll in here. We'll actually show you the process of feeding and uh, you guys will have a good idea of what we do by the end of this video. So if you guys have those picky fish at home or those fry, I hope that I've encouraged you enough to try Daphnia in your own home and showed you how easy they can be to culture and it will help you be successful in your journey of fish keeping. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys make it a great rest of your week. As always, God bless. We'll catch you on the flip side.